Hello, now today I'm going to talk about the new E-Class Cabriolet, which you see here in all its finery. Now, I have to admit, I quite like an E-Class Cabriolet. It's not a sporty car, but it's a very Mercedes car. Mercedes has been building cars like this, well, since the very beginning really, but certainly in the post-war period, we've had large, luxurious, four-seated cabriolets like this at the core of the range. It's a very Mercedes product. There were the Pontons of the 50s, the Fintels of the 60s, a bit of a breakthrough in the 70s, and then the original E-Class Cabriolet of the early 90s. This very much picks up on all those traditions. It's, as I say, not a sporting car in the least. It's a big, wafty, luxurious Mercedes which is rather good. Now then, you can have it in E220 or E350 diesel. I think if you're buying a diesel cabriolet, you probably don't really get it. I'm not sure why anyone would want a diesel powered cabriolet, people do. You can also have it as E300 petrol, or as you see here, E400 formatic V6 petrol. Now that has 333 horsepower, and I think a six cylinder engine is appropriate for a car like this. Now, how does it look? Well, I think it's pretty handsome, really. We'll have a look around the front here. It's got certainly got plenty of Mercedes presence. It's a longer and wider car than the one it replaces. I think the lines are pretty successful. Obviously, it's based on the E-Class Coupe, which came out not that long ago. It now completes the E-Class family. We've got saloon, estate, all-terrain, coupe, and now cabriolet. It's quite chintzy in places, I've got to say. It's very kind of luxurious, and it's got lots and lots of toys. Now then, I'll show you the interior when I'm driving it a bit more, but you get a sense of just how luxurious this car is from the way it looks. Now then, to buy one of these, you would be starting at about 45 grand for the four cylinder versions. This one costs just shy of 55 list. Onto that, you can add a whole load of extras. I think probably by the time you were done, this car here would be more like 65, 70. I've done a bit of totting up on the price list and that's kind of what it came to. I'll talk you through some of those bits and bobs once we go for a drive. Is it worth that kind of money? Let's go and find out. Right, so here I am in my Mercedes E-Class Cabriolet, but I've got the roof up. I thought I'd just try it in this configuration first, just to see what it's like. And to be honest, you'd probably be hard pressed to tell it was a cabriolet at all, because it's so refined in here with the roof up. This is a fabric roof, but it's very, very well insulated and a very wafty, comfortable place to spend time. But we're not here to drive it with the roof up. The sun's out. I think I should probably lower the roof, which I can do at speeds of up to about 30 miles an hour. This is probably going to annoy any Italians behind me, so let's do that. Okay, here we go. So the roof's coming down now. So there we go, we're now in Cabriolet configuration, which is kind of appropriate, really. Now, Mercedes really, really wants you to drive this car with the roof down. There's all sorts of stuff added to it to make sure that you can drive it top down, whatever the weather. So if you add a few extras onto it, you can have heated seats. Obviously, you can have air scarf to blow hot air down your neck. You can, have, you can even have a warm armrest to put your elbow on. But it doesn't stop there. We've got things like the air cap, which I can deploy with this button here. It puts a little deflector up at the back and puts this weird kind of spoiler thing here on top of the windscreen. Now that's supposed to reduce the turbulence in the cabin, but to be honest, I think it actually makes things a little bit noisy because you can hear the wind rushing through it. So to be honest, I'll be spending more time driving with it down, but it's kind of full of these kind of thoughtful attention to detail things like the wipers only squirt on the downstroke if you've got the roof down. So you don't get water in your face if you have to clean the windscreen. There's lots of kind of thoughtful little touches in this car like that. It's, it's a very thoroughly thought out car, as you'd probably expect a Mercedes. As I said in my introduction, this is Mercedes very much in its comfort zone. Big, luxurious cabriolets are a Mercedes thing. And the E-Class Cabriolet does it really, really well. Now this E400 with its V6 is, I think, an appropriate engine for the car. It's got it's not the nicest sounding engine in the world, but it's just got that kind of smoothness and authority that you'd want in a kind of big, wafty cabriolet. And it is big and wafty, and it makes no pretense about that, which I think is really rather nice. So you've got, like in most Mercedes, you've got a dynamic mode here thing that you can switch into Sport and Sport Plus. Why would you want to do that in an E-Class cabriolet? I don't really think there's much point. I tried it in all those sportier modes, but to be honest, I just kept coming back to comfort, because that seems to be the correct demeanour for this car. It's a comfortable car. 
So now, mechanically, it's got a nine-speed automatic gearbox, like all of the E-Class Cabriolets, so that's very smooth, as you'd expect. This one's got air suspension, so that's kind of appropriate. The technology in this car is, there's some history in that, because the older Mercedes Cabriolets always had the latest tech, whether it was fuel injection in the 50s and 60s, or air suspension on the 300 SE, the one based on the, on the Fintail saloon. So they've always had lots of technology, and that carries through to the interior style as well. I mean, it's it's perhaps a little bit chintzy, it's not entirely to my taste, but it's certainly spectacular. There's lots of stuff going on. And there's loads of gadgets and gizmos too. This big widescreen thing is it's perhaps not pretty, but it's it's got lots of it's very, very clever, and the graphics are great and all that kind of thing. It's got lots of functionality. This extra widescreen here costs another 500 quid, but the command system is standard on the E400. So you get lots of toys and the opportunity to spend big on a lot more. It's just a very nice place to be. Now, it's defiantly not a sporty car, and I quite like that. I think it's very, very much in keeping with the traditions of Mercedes Cabriolets, and it just is very much Mercedes in its comfort zone. And that's really rather a nice thing.